Okay, we're going to start off this afternoon with a period of meditation, and I will say a few words at the beginning of the meditation, and then a period of silent meditation, uh, following which I will give a talk and answer questions. Um, so, first thing about posture, I know some very um, good, let's say good, not some good words used for meditation, but good meditators with lousy posture. So, don't worry too much about posture, but there are um, uh, two main principles um, involved in sitting meditation, um, and they are that we we, uh, we aim for a posture which will be most conducive um, to the abandonment of hindrances and the development of the mental factors supportive of samadhi and wisdom. A straight back, straight but not rigid back, um, is very useful in this regard. Particularly if we are sitting in a cross-legged posture, which has, I don't believe, any great mystical significance, <coughs> but it provides a, um, a firm triangular basis for the body. A sitting uh, with a straight back. Um, does a great deal to prevent the onset of drowsiness, um, but uh, perhaps more importantly, we are sitting in a posture which gives us a sense of self-reliance, um, and the physical sense of self-reliance is one which provides a support for the inner sense of self-reliance, which is one of the features of the well-educated mind. Stillness of the body will somewhat alleviate the mental agitation of the mind. It won't um, eliminate it, but it is at least not making the condition any worse. And again, being familiar with sitting in the present moment in physical stillness gives us a sense, gives us a hint of that inner spiritual stillness which arises naturally when we are willing to let go of all that obscures it. Now it's not the case that every time we adopt our meditation posture, one in which we are sitting with a straight, a naturally straight back and maintaining a level of stillness, it's not always the case that our mind is ready to 
dwell with the meditation object. So we need to examine the state of our mind at the beginning of meditation and ask this crucial question whether it is ready yet to focus upon a meditation object. If there are a lot of um, worries and concerns in the mind and one part of our mind is still um, bound up with those thoughts and hasn't made a clear determination to put them aside for the time being, then after the initial effort of focusing on the meditation object, the mind will tend to revert to that um, unresolved issue. So sometimes it is of great benefit to talk to yourself at the beginning of a meditation to clarify your goal and to remind yourself of the things that you do not want to be doing in the meditation, things that you need to be wary of. So if there is some particular worry or obsession in the mind, you just tell yourself, this, uh, just to put that down for the time being. You'll be able to take it up after the meditation, if you so wish, but this is not the right time and place uh, to dwell on that matter. Now is the time to abandon our enjoyment of memory and our enjoyment of imagination and thinking. We may even consider our everyday normal attitude to mental activity as addiction. So at least for the time being, uh, we're going to try to see what it's like to live addiction-free um, instead of trying to suck every piece of bit of enjoyment out of a memory, a fantasy, a thought, um, we're going to seek to develop the state of alert relaxation or relaxed alertness to find that balance between wakefulness and relaxation. This is the challenge and the skill that we may expect to, to meet and to develop in our meditation practice. So whatever particular technique that we are applying and whether we call it samatha, we call it vipassana, we, we call it this or we call it that, the heart of all meditation techniques are developing the ability to sustain relaxed alertness, alert relaxation. If the mind is a little sluggish or a little agitated, um, a good warm-up exercise for mindfulness is to um, recognize, acknowledge, turn the mind to the sensations in the body beginning with the top of the head. And so you can do this rather quickly, you can do it very slowly, the amount of detail uh, with which you, you pursue this investigation is a matter for you to decide. Um, but we bring our attention to 
the sensations in the top of the head without judgment, without like or dislike, without embellishment, and simply aware of what's present. The feelings in the face as we inhale and then exhale, simply aware of the sensations in the face, not visualizing the face, thinking about the face, really aware of whatever sensations are there. And then as we breathe in and breathe out in a very natural, alert and relaxed manner, aware of the sensations in the neck, Breathing in, breathing out, we are aware of the sensations in the shoulders. As we breathe in, we breathe out, we are aware of the sensations in the arms. From the top of the arms, downwards, elbows, wrists, to the hands and fingers. body inhales, the body exhales, there is no inhaler, no exhaler, we'd be aware of the sensations in the chest as the body inhales, as the body exhales. Feelings in the belly as the body breathes in, the body breathes out, it's relaxed, alertness, alert relaxation, no longer taking delight in memory and thought and imagination, enjoying this meditation exercise, noticing how much more pleasant and natural it feels to be awake and present than it does to be distracted. Turn the attention to the back, tracing the pattern of sens- sensations from the base of the neck down to the coccyx. The body breathes in, breathes out, simply aware of those sensations. The sensations in the buttocks, we breathe in, we breathe out. And the sensations in the legs, from the top of the legs, the thighs, the knees, the calves and the shins, the ankles, the toes, the feet and the toes, the whole of the legs feet and toes. So now the body breathes in and the body breathes out. Feeling the breath in every part of the body. Feeling the breath like a, a balloon. It's being expanding and contracting. And we stay trying to sustain a sense of relaxed alertness, alert relaxation, wakefulness in the present moment, experiencing breath in the physical body, entering and leaving the body until we experience a sense of contentment and interest. If 
contentment and interest and enthusiasm, devotion to this state of alert relaxation is the prerequisite for successful meditation. So don't begrudge the time that this may take. Only when that sense of contentment, interest, devotion, enjoyment of that present moment awareness, clear, sharp, bright, has arisen. Do we now focus upon the sensation of the breath at one particular point in the body. Choose the point at which you feel the most ease and contentment and interest and enjoyment. So rather than concentrating on an object We are sustaining this wakeful alertness using the sensation of a breath of the breath as an instrument to keep us on track to refer to in the present moment. We may choose to use a mantra to help us be awake and alert and relaxed with the inhalation and the exhalation, such as buddho, for instance, but any two-syllable word with an uplifting meaning may be implied. We may choose to count the breaths if the mind is especially active or stubborn. On the inhalation counting one, exhalation one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Reaching five, begin again, count one, one, two, two until six and then count 1 to 7, and then 1 to 8, and then 1 to 9, and then 1 to 10. And that um, fulfills one cycle. So that becomes um, an initial goal to sustain a relaxed, alert attention in the present moment, counting breaths, one to five, one to six, one to seven, one to eight, one to nine, one to ten, without distraction, without forgetting. Recognize, recognize, acknowledge, enjoy this state of relaxed alertness, alert relaxation. Not identifying with or attaching to the pleasant feelings that arise when we are relaxed and alert 
in the present moment, but employing, making use of those pleasant feelings to embolden the mind, to give the mind the courage to let go of its addiction to thought and memory. If the mind becomes rather stiff or sleepy, then return to the full body awareness of the breath and make use of the perception of light to free the mind from drowsiness, inhaling pure light, exhaling pure light, making use of our memory and imagination to aid rather than hinder our meditation. Once the drowsiness or stiffness of mind is reduced, eliminated, then returning to the relaxed awareness coupled with, guided by the sensation of the inhalation and the exhalation. 